Next up, Johnny's learning the tricks of a man who, would you believe, charges up to £5,000 to wash a car. The world's gone mad. Paul Townsend doesn't just wash cars, he's a detailer. And his standards are so high that, to him, even a car that appears to be immaculate is actually riddled with filth. So, I've brought along the largest, most luxurious new car I can lay my hands on. A £230,000 Rolls-Royce Ghost extended wheelbase. Let's see what he can do with that. Today, I'll be Paul's apprentice, learning his secrets and helping you learn to properly wash your car. Paul, I made the mistake of once calling a detailer a valeter. That didn't no, go well. No, it didn't. Valeting is kind of like professional cleaning. Detailing takes it to a much bigger level. There's more restoration, there's more about protecting your car. Let's draw attention to what's behind you. That is brand new box fresh. Yep. How can you improve a new car? First, I'm going to show you how to safely wash the car so as not to cause any marks on the paintwork, and then I'll show you how to protect it. A large part of Paul's job is detailing brand new cars to protect their paint from future damage. Come on then, let's crack on. OK, stand back. Oh, I'm good. First, the rolls is sprayed with a detergent to soften the dirt. It's important to use a car shampoo, as washing up liquid can damage the paint's wax coating. In fact, washing up liquid is pure Satan to a car's bodywork. Next, a rinse, and it's ready to be washed with Paul's special furry mitten. By using a, a, lamb, of... a lamb's wool wash mitt, the, the pile of the fibre means that the dirt has got somewhere to go, so we, we're getting it properly off the car, away from the paint surface, yep. and not just rubbing it around back on, on top of the paint. Of course, just one bucket isn't enough for Paul. The idea being, get the suds water, you wash water from this bucket, you would wash a section of the car, yep. and then you can rinse it in this bucket, and the dirt will fall off there, and because of the guard at the bottom, it will fall through, yep. and you won't then pick it back up. Yep. So the chances are a lot of people if, um, actually scratch their own car when they're cleaning it. it yeah, washing and drying are the, are the places where people do most damage to their own car. Yep. We'll start with the roof. Always the roof, yeah. I do do that, actually. OK, I'm going to yep. work in nice straight lines. No circles. Yeah, no, no circles. Now the rolls need to be dried. Instead of rubbing it with a chamois, Paul uses a microfiber towel to pat the paint dry, eliminating the risk of scratching. Just literally lay the towel out. Just take that away. Bloody hell, that actually just... That did just dry it. It did. I was expecting it to still have a lot of moisture left. To most of us, the rolls is now spotless, but to Paul, it's still covered in scratches and muck. You can see that the car is clean, but there are some scratches and fine marks um, on the paintwork. To tackle the specks of grime, Paul uses a clay bar. This will remove any contaminants from the paintwork that normal washing won't. After spraying the paint with clay bar lubricant, the fine particles of muck stick to the fine putty and are removed. You can see some dirt on that clay. Yeah, and that's straight after we've that washed it. That's a new car that we've just washed. Because this rolls still isn't clean, he brings out the machine polisher. Now, I've not done much machine polishing in my life. OK. I'm a bit scared of it, because you, you're applying quite a lot of pressure sometimes. Actually, no, you're not. That's one of the biggest mistakes people make straight away. You need oh. to let the machine do the work. Um, and so, it's, so if the veins in the side of my head are bulging and my arms go... No, it's, that's too much. OK. Applying three tiny dots of polish to its pad. I like the fact that I'm doing this for the first time on a Rolls Royce that's brand new. There's no better way to learn. OK, so now the polish is spread, we can turn the speed up and keep moving all the time. That's it. Perfect. After two minutes of buffing, the polish is gone, leaving behind an immaculate shine. But it's still not finished. Next, Paul applies the wax, which protects the paint. A little bit on, on, a, on a foam pad. 
You're not using hardly any. This, this, the biggest problem that people find with products is that they put too much on, and as a result, they find them hard to use. This wax would comfortably wax this car 30 times, maybe 40 times, okay? So it is, I, I think that one's about 130 pounds or so, but it would go a long, long way. That's amazing. How often would you wax the car? <laughs> I would wax, depending on what I was using, I would um, wax it every four to six months. See, that surprises me again, because I thought you'd want to do it much more than that. No. After a final buff, we're left with a dazzling boot lid, clean and perfectly smooth. Oh. When you feel a part of the car that hasn't had any polishing, I can, I can actually feel that on the roof. You can hear it. Yeah, I can hear that. Don't know if pick it up on the microphone. And then you do this. That's nothing. And I know that's a little bit pervy. See, that's brilliant. I really didn't think it would make that much of a difference, but it really does. To clean the whole car would take Paul two days, and you pay for his expertise. But we can all learn from the basics. Start at the top, wash in straight lines, not swirls, pat, don't rub your car dry, and use as little polish and wax as possible. So next time you think about using the two pound car wash at your local petrol station, don't.